Welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. Hello everybody and welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast episode 54. And you may hear some birds outside because finally summer has come to the UK so I can't sit here with closed windows and inside I have to get some of that lovely fresh air in so you, you may hear some background noise. Um, today I want to talk about something that's on the English with Kirsty blog. It's not that everything that I put on there becomes a podcast but sometimes if I write an article I think it would be useful for the podcast listeners then I will use the same material. So if you want to have a look at this article, I'll link it from the show notes page, which is www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash episode 54. So I'll link it from there. And, and also, if you're interested in the blog, you may want to follow that because, as I say, not everything that comes on the blog comes on the podcast. So um, there, there are some other tips there about um, the Wise Old Owl series and learners helping learners and uh, Germans in the UK and various other series and one-off articles that I write on there. So this effective communication series is not only aimed at people who are learning English, but also people who want to improve their English, uh, maybe people who are running their own businesses or people who have to deal with customers and have customer service facing roles. And so it's about how to improve your communication, not just making sure that the sentences are grammatically correct, but also that you get your message across well. And this particular article is looking at how can you persuade people to trust you? Because you hear about the no like and trust factor, so people have to know you, which means you have to show up regularly with your content, your message, give the same message consistently, um, let people know what you're about. Whether people like you is really their decision. I don't believe you should work really hard to get people to like you because there will always be some people that do like you and some people that don't. So be yourself, do your best, and and then those who genuinely like you will do so. But trust, how do you get people to trust you? Um, and I've got some points here, some things that you shouldn't do and some things that you should do, some things that work and some things that, that don't that I've seen not working. First of all, if you want people to trust you, you have to mean what you say. So if you say you're going to do something, then do it. <laughs> if you don't want to do it, then don't say that you will. And, and that's especially true of people. If they contact you and you say that you're going to send them some further information, then, then make sure you do. Uh, because if they're not going to chase you up for it, if they're trying to get something from you, maybe about a product or a service or something, um, don't just tell people what you think they want to hear if you're if you're going to commit to something then make sure that you do it and if you can't do it find someone who can so you don't end up just disappointing people and if you say in your emails on your email list that you want people to connect with you and to answer a question then don't just let all those emails sit in the inbox folder or the <laughs> wherever you put them folder answer them and that doesn't mean you have to answer every email that you are sent. I'm sent some really crazy emails and some spam emails and, and they don't get a reply. But if I say to people that I want interaction on my Facebook page or, or wherever, then I take the time to, to interact as well because otherwise people feel that you're just using them to push up your Facebook reach, that kind of thing. And that's not cool. If, if you want to talk to people, if you say, oh, write and answer this question in my newsletter, then acknowledge that because someone's taken the time to um, to respond. And I've I've had experiences before where I've signed up for something and, and someone said, oh, I really want to know about your experiences with this. Um, and then they they didn't answer, which is fine. I, I don't need their answer, but, you know, mean what you say. If you say you're going to engage with your readers, then then do it. Number two, it's better to over deliver than to short change. And that doesn't mean it's okay to let people ask for more and more and more and, and to be used by people. But if you promise that you're going to do something, then, then do it really well because that 
will make people feel satisfied. They'll feel that they've had a good experience with you and they'll go and tell their friends, hopefully. Or even if they don't, if your name, your business comes up, then they'll have something positive to say about it. It's really nice that um, I saw something that somebody wrote about English with Kirsty the other day and it was completely unsolicited. I didn't ask them to do it, but they did it freely. If <laughs> It was their decision. And I just thought, oh, that's really nice. Um, and I can think of another situation where somebody mentioned a particular company. I won't mention it here. But as soon as they did, other people said, oh, yeah, I've heard about them. They're not very good, are they? And it, it really made me think that the some of the best publicity that you can get for your business is other people saying really good things about you. And that's more likely to happen if you over deliver and don't just promise more than you're willing to give or do um, what you said and, and nothing more. If you if you create a good atmosphere with your customers, then they'll be more likely to tell their friends or just to, to tell other people about what you're doing. Number three, be honest with money. And that doesn't just mean don't steal from people, although you shouldn't do that. It's about being upfront. And if, if somebody asks how much something will cost, then, then tell them how much it will cost. Hidden costs are not cool. Like, oh yeah, you have to pay this much, but if you want this and this and this feature, which I'd also already promised you, you have to pay this. Or, you know, don't, don't work with hidden costs. Tell people how much things will cost and then they can decide. Obviously tell them the benefits as well, but what I'm saying is don't try to, to hide costs in your price that they then come back to bite them later because that, that makes them feel that they've been deceived and that's that's not a good thing. And also not everybody is organized with their money and sometimes people buy blocks of lessons with me and they, they don't know how many they've had, but you know, be honest. I've got a really good tracking system and spreadsheets for everything, so I, I know how many lessons people have had, but um, it, it feels good because I know that people trust me. They trust A, that I'm organized and B, that I'm honest and, and that feels good. And that's that's a good position to be in and that, that's what i would advise you to do to be honest anyway but particularly with money because people feel they remember if they think that you've tried to take more money than you should have and it's right as well because it's it's bad to be dishonest be discreet so some of these particularly businesses where you're working with other people um, they may give you information if you're helping them with their business. You may see information about their business if you're helping them with um, some kind of personal situation, whether it's learning or helping them to overcome a problem. Then you're going to find out information about them. And you need to be professional about that because nobody will trust you if you get a reputation as somebody that just talks about other people um, somebody who doesn't respect confidentiality that your reputation will be really quickly destroyed if you don't if you don't do this it's really important that people know you're somebody if you tell them something then it won't be on facebook the next day it won't be um doing the rounds because things change but things often get back to the first person who said them or the person who it was about so be aware that people are trusting you because they're giving you this information and you need to prove that you're worthy of that trust by not sharing it more widely. And obviously issues around data protect protection as well. You need to be clear about how you um, store your data and who has access to it. Uh, number five, give a consistent message even when you think it doesn't matter or even when you think people aren't looking. So don't just say all the right things if you if you don't mean them because it's a really hard act to keep up and it will catch you out i remember a situation where somebody was talking about the importance of engaging with people on social media and contacting them and and then that same person in in another place said oh I, you know i don't really care about interaction with people it's just a way to get them on my list i, I don't care what they think or what they have to say and I thought that's, on one hand, that's honest, but I don't want to do business with someone like that. Um, of course, everybody who's running a business wants to earn money, but I would much rather give my money as a customer to somebody that is genuinely interested in the customers and not just somebody who wants to take my money and who pretends that they're interested but really doesn't care. So, you know, if... If you want to give the impression that you are interested, then try to be interested or don't say it. 
if you generally don't care then that's your decision but it's better for you if you don't pretend you do because you know these little comments if, if you're trying to be something that you don't really believe these comments will come out to bite you number six don't keep moving boundaries to suit yourself so if you tell people that there are going to be 10 people on a course and you get 20 people signing up then rather than just say okay we'll squeeze them all on because then I can make some more money either have a waiting list for the second course or run two courses if you have the resources to do that but if you've told the participants it's going to be a small group then don't move the boundaries just because you can make a bit more money because people will feel shortchanged that way and people hate feeling shortchanged and they won't come back so um, similarly if you say okay the, the deadline for signing up for this course is the last day in September and then the course starts and, and you get somebody wanting to join in November then you know if you've put pressure on people to to make their decision before the course and then you let someone in halfway through that that doesn't create a very good impression and the other people may feel well I could have started at any time then if it doesn't really matter so be clear if, if you say that you're going to do something then then do it it's like we said at the beginning don't keep changing the boundaries just because it would be better for you financially and if you do want to do that then do it in a way that doesn't disadvantage the customer if you can afford if you have time to run the two courses then do that that's great you can you can make twice as much money but don't put people in a really big group if you told them they were going to be in a small group or don't squeeze people in if, if you said that there is only a limited amount of places number seven don't be that pushy salesperson nobody likes them nobody really wants to spend time with them and yet still some people feel that they need to be that person so if, if people are genuinely interested they will listen and they will want to find out more and there's nothing wrong with it with telling people about the benefits of what you have to offer but um, just don't don't put pressure on people and make them feel uncomfortable because even if they do sign up for something they'll feel kind of hounded into it and if anything during the whole experience with you leaves them feeling dissatisfied they will then remember how they felt hounded into making the decision decision in the first place and number eight the final one is show don't tell so if you want people to believe that you're trustworthy then be trustworthy that doesn't mean you have to go on about how trustworthy you are you just day to day behave in a way that makes people trust you that know be sincere have integrity and then people will trust you it's not something that you can make them do it's just something that they will do if they see behavior that they can respect and and they will want to do business with you if they feel that you're somebody that can be trusted so if you want to have a look at this article I will link it on the show notes page and also if you're interested in the blog then you can sign up for the blog um, you can follow the blog or most of the blog articles are linked in the newsletter so if you want to see a monthly digest of the articles and podcasts and, and other information I put in you can sign up for the newsletter and also don't forget that the business English club is starting in September so membership costs 15 pounds which is around 18 euros um, but as a podcast listener if you sign up and use the code giraffe 92 you'll get five pounds off your first month so use giraffe 92 and you'll get a five pound discount on the first month that you book okay I hope that was useful it's a bit different today because it was more about communication than English learning but whatever language you're communicating in it's good to, to think of these things because it's not just what you say I mean the other day we we're talking about things to avoid in emails phrases not to say but it's not just what you say it's also what you do that affects how people judge you and what people think about you so I wanted to to cover that this week hope that was useful hope you have a good week enjoy the sunshine if you're in England because it's so rare <laughs> and see you again next week I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments, my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast 
where you'll find information about the individual episodes. 